Cracker Barrel closes three more Oregon locations. They have closed all the stores in Portland. You got no more stores in Portland, Oregon. We covered uh, Hayden Island, the Jansen Beach closing of Cracker Barrel back in August last summer, August of 2022. Now, Cracker Barrel is just basically out of Oregon with the exception of one store left. Where's that store? Let's get into it. Let's see what's going on. Do not, I repeat, do not forget to check out our members only section. Got a whole bunch of content there that can't be placed elsewhere. So if you enjoy this and you want to do a little overindulgence and see some content that isn't available on all the other platforms because, you know, that whole censorship thing, that's what we're doing. 10 bucks a month. It's a deal. We're releasing at least two additional podcasts a week you won't see anywhere else. That's a deal. Check it out. Thanks in advance. Also, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, share this content with your friends, family, anybody who you think might appreciate reasonable news content. Thank you. So the interesting thing about the three Cracker Barrel stores that just got closed in Oregon are that they are not in, you know, crazy liberal cities, big cities like Portland. Two are in the Portland metro area. Those made sense. But then you've got, um, you've got one left in Medford and that is not, it's, um, it, it's a decent town. It's a good town. Um, you know, you can't put it in that same category as Portland, but then the, the closing of another couple of stores that, uh, that we're going to talk about Beaverton to and Bend. I mean, those are not whacked out locations by any means. But Cracker Barrel Corporate has said, hey, you know, here's the thing. Since the pandemic, we can't make a go of it. We're going to shut these down. I think there's some other stuff going on there. Taxation in Portland, business climate in Portland, not not just Portland, but I mean, Oregon. I think you've got, um, there's some extenuating stuff going on. There's some behind the scenes stuff going on that we have not been made aware of. We're going to, we're going to touch on as much as we know and touch on as much, as much as we can guess, because it seems like just about every other day I'm doing a podcast on a major corporation shutting down either a grocery store or a Walmart type deal or, you know, a, a notable national chain restaurant, which Cracker Barrel is. I'm doing one of those just about every other day right now. So this is the culmination of a lot of things that are indicative of an anti-business climate. And when you have options like a Cracker Barrel does, who has, what was it, six or 700 restaurants throughout the United States, and they're telling us, hey, these ones in Oregon, they're non-performing. And you look at those locations and you go, okay, all right, maybe you're telling us maybe it's a performance issue for, you know, those cities in Oregon. But is it really? That's kind of my thought is really, really a performance pandemic couldn't make it go or you don't want to make it go. Let's jump on in. Cracker Barrel announced Monday that it's closing three of the remaining four locations in Oregon. We are down to one store. And this is seven months after it closed this Jansen Beach store. So the Jansen Beach store. So we had Sanford, that or Stanford, uh, that was a steakhouse, really nice upper end steakhouse owned by a corporate entity here in Bellevue. We had BJ's, my beloved BJ's. We had that closed down all right within a, a walking distance in the Jansen Beach area. So that those all those closings all made sense. It's like, okay, you've got, you know, the zombies walking around, you've got break-ins, the, the employees are not safe, you don't have a lot of foot traffic. Um, it's just not a safe environment. Those made sense. The ones we're talking about today, the Beaverton, Tulatin, and am I saying Tulatin right? I think I am. That's Indian, Native American Indian, and sometimes those names get a little wonky, right? Tulatin and Bend locations were notified Monday that the three stores were closing effective immediately. Immediately, like there was no notice, just boom, done. Usually they give a little bit, they give a kind of a running you know, we'll, we'll give you guys a couple of weeks to find jobs at our other company stores. 
And what's crazy is that, um, you know, you're not going to have, it's not like a uh, Target closing down or a Walmart closing down where you've got all these other stores in the area. Employees can go there if they want to, you know, they're given that option here with this one. It was just boom, done. We're not open. Um, and, and this is what the company told KGW, who I'm reading the article from. Only one Cracker Barrel remains open in Oregon, the Southern Oregon location in Medford. And that is a little bit more, for Oregon, that is a little bit more conservative. It's more conservative, for sure. You go Southern Oregon, you go Eastern Oregon, more conservative. You're, you've got more of a rural atmosphere. You know, people are responsible for their own public safety. People carry guns. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a different drill than the urban Multnomah County where Portland is located, where it makes total sense to me that so many stores are being closed in different restaurants. Some of these other ones, um, yeah, and we'll get into it. In a statement shared with KGW, Cracker Barrel cited the pandemic's impact on the business as a reason for the three new closures. As a standard course of, okay, here's corporate talk, right? Here's corporate talk. As a standard course of business, we continually evaluate the performance of our stores using various criteria to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our guests and our business, the company said. With that, we are saddened that we have been unable to overcome the impact the pandemic had on our business and have made the difficult decision to close the Beaverton, Tulatin, and Bend locations. Beaverton, that's a, that's a decent city. That's not crazy. It's not overrun with crazy, right? How many podcasts have you had from me on, you know, homeless encampments going out of control in Beaverton? None that I know of. Tulatin, that's a decent location. I mean, that, nothing wrong there. And Bend, okay, so Bend, I'm familiar with Bend. It's kind of um, southeast Oregon. Spent a lot of time in Bend on my way down to Sun River, a, kind of a resort community. I'd rent a house with my boys and their friends. Sometimes 10, 10 or 12 of us would go down and um, just have a great time. We'd raft the – we'd raft the um, – Deschutes River, I think it is. And um, kids would play golf and you know do all kinds of, we just had a lot of fun. We rented a big house. It was um, zero estrogen. There was no ladies involved, except whatever ladies the kids kicked up at, um, you know, the community pool and that kind of thing. And there, uh, yeah, that was, that was a handful too. But, you know, we had some great times in the Bend area, just some epic off-roading times. I'd take my truck and we just, you know, a crew of us would go off into the wilderness and just go, you know, hang out and we had some disasters too but um you know what what fun event doesn't come with some disasters and so bend that one maybe it's the the food type uh, menu choices that you've got of a cracker barrel it's kind of a comfort food thing whereas bend is probably a little bit more hoity toity i would say in its downtown core, you know, think, um, you got a lot of like micro brews and you've got, you've got some folks with money. It's become very expensive in Bend. So does that one make sense? Okay. Maybe from a performance standpoint. Yeah, for sure. But it certainly ain't because there's homeless running around, breaking into the store, creating havoc for, you know, walk-in customers. It's not that kind of thing. So that's why some of these to me were just like head scratchers. You're like, uh, oh, why'd they close that down? Well, they basically want to be out of Oregon. You know, the decision to close a store is never one we take lightly. And our focus right now is on assisting our impacted employees during this transition. In other words, we have shut this mofo down now. And that's what they did. Former employees told KGW the news was a surprise to them. This was a surprise to everybody. There was no heads up. That I can tell. I mean, there's people in the food industry that probably knew, but they were probably told, hey, don't disclose this yet. It was just a regular day at work yesterday. Everyone was the same. I was talking with my manager about working more hours and taking time off for spring break, said Jordan Nursky, who worked in Tulaton. We didn't really know anything was happening and just out of the blue this morning got a phone call. We do not need you to come in today, uh, Jordan. Unfortunately, your services are no longer needed. Good luck with that. Click. I don't know how that, that conversation probably went a little bit better than that. But at the end of the day, when you get the call that your services are no longer needed in your restaurant service job, 
that's a tough go. Kid needs money for school. So we should get Jordan Nursky. We need to get him a uh, GoFundMe college. Yep. Several customers were also upset by the news. I don't know if the Yankees could support good Southern cooking and apparently not, said a customer named James outside the shuttered Beaverton location. Okay, we're bringing Yankees into it and we're not talking New York Yankees, right? Not talking, yeah. So I could support good Southern cooking and apparently not. No, I think they do support good Southern cu- cooking um, is what I am told that it's consistent I've read a lot of, I've had to do some Cracker Barrel. I've had to do some Cracker Barrel barrel uh, education because I've never eaten at one. We don't really have them. We don't have any here in Washington that I know of. And so it's all based on, you know, experiences that other people have had. And, and from a lot of you who have said, hey, Cracker Barrel is pretty good. And it is Southern cooking. It's like comfort food. And maybe that just couldn't make it in a location like Bend. Maybe that just couldn't make it in Beaverton. Maybe that just couldn't make it in to Layton. It just weren't viable. It just wasn't the right fit. But the ones in Portland? Mm, yeah, those went down for a reason, right? Like all the stuff in Portland that's going down for a reason. In August 2022, Cracker Barrel closed its Jansen Beach location. At the time, the corporation said the store wasn't meeting unspecified evaluation criteria to meet the needs of our guests and our business. It's just, hey, it wasn't working out. The numbers weren't there. And that's what they'll often say for a wide variety of reasons that they don't want to get into. You know what I mean? And it's their business, but it impacts the community. It impacts their employees. And now you've got a building that's going to be left there, you know, in each of these communities. Now, in these other communities, in Beaverton, Layton, um, you know, there's a good chance that those buildings will get taken over by another business because those are probably viable locations. The Jansen Beach one in um, in Portland, probably not because you've already got a number of good size, you know, chain restaurants and stores that have all pulled out for the same reason. You've got criminal activity. You've got, you know, people on drugs running around stealing and you know, you've got these areas of commercial that have just gone wildly sideways. They've just really deteriorated. A lot of broken, you know, stores that are closed down. And this is, this is the normal cycle that you see in areas that are going sideways. So this last couple of of Cracker Barrels in Oregon. They're interesting. That's an interesting twist. And we'll probably find out later what the real deal was, what the real, you know, what what actually happened, what actually tipped things one way or the other. But either which way, this doesn't look good. I mean, it just doesn't look good for Oregon in general, right? Got a big chain, a, a chain that people love. I was watching videos and <clears throat> there was a couple, actually, I think let's, let's go read that story right now. There was a, um, there was a couple that, uh, talked about, Hey, this is why we like to go there. An older couple bend cracker barrel shut suddenly citing pandemic impact, staffing struggles, 29 lose jobs. I would buy that if it was just bend. Okay. You got a specific set of circumstances, but they closed all but one other store in or Oregon in its entirety. They're just like, we're out. So you can't tell me that the pandemic impact, staffing struggles, that those are across the board all the same. You know, certain aspects of that, yes. But that's nationwide too. Pandemic impact impacted a lot of stores. Staffing struggles, nobody wants to work. What is up with that? Why does why does nobody want to work anymore? Why what happened? Where did we go sideways there? Nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to work a damn job. Everybody wants to work remotely from home and not really do anything. They don't want to, they don't want to do these, these jobs, right? Hard work. What happened there? We're kind of losing that whole infrastructure of our ability to put wait staff in a restaurant, some super basic stuff. It's, um, yeah. Times are changing and not necessarily for the better. Now I'm just sounding like a bitter old man, right? So 
let's let's see what Bend, Oregon has to say about their Cracker Barrel store closing. Cracker Barrel restaurant in Northern Bend, which has struggled since the pandemic hit a year after it opened. Uh, the pandemic hit a year after it opened, shut its door suddenly yesterday morning, Monday morning, and all 29 employees learned they were out of a job. Just over four years after its grand opening, COVID-19 pandemic's lingering impacts. Mm, I don't know, right? Yeah, COVID's been over for a while, right? Is this, it, is this just a thing where they tried to make it work, tried to see if it was a go? Hey, long term, is this going to be viable? Cause we got so many millions invested in each of these locations. Is that what happened? The COVID-19 pandemic's lingering impacts prompted the closure of the Cracker Barrel restaurant, an old country store on Robo Lane, the company said. The last two Cracker Barrels in the Portland area also closed on Monday. Now, I had I watched a video and somebody was saying they're really excited to go buy gifts in the Cracker Barrel store. Um, and somebody was saying, hey, I liked all their food. They had good food selections. And in this store here, and we might touch on it in this article, but they started to remove a number of the items from a menu. And so people people could tell things were going on, but there was no major indication. Hey, this store is going under. So some business neighbors of the Bend restaurant weren't too surprised. Let's find out why. This is, we need to know. When they first opened, it was incredibly busy for the uh, first week. Trailhead liquor owner Angela Chisholm said, Trailhead liquor. I'm going to go on a hike. I'm going to bring some whiskey with me, right? That's what we're doing. Maybe it was trailhead from the standpoint of, you know, your horse and you're at the trailhead and there's the trail and you're going to ride your trail off. Go west, young man, go west on your horse. Maybe it was that. Everyone was excited to try it. Talking about Cracker Barrel in, um, in Bend. Some people have never tried it since it's normal, it's normally more of a Midwest thing. And it pretty much died after that. So maybe it was one of those things where you've got the pandemic on top of a location that didn't exactly accept, you know, it didn't appeal to the people living in the Bend area. That could very well be. It pretty much died after that, their initial run. Before noon Monday, the lights in Cracker Barrel were on and a few people could be seen inside. A notice on the door told customers it had closed. Paul Uhas and his wife, Corey Campbell, were on their way to get a meal Monday in a case of unfortunate timing in their quest for comfort food. We were just coming from Bend and we're going to Redmond and we're looking for a place to eat. And we said, oh, let's stop at the Cracker Barrel. And walking up to the door, we see a sign saying they're closed, U.S. said. That was the couple, I think, that um, that I watched in a video. Callers to News Channel 21 and neighboring businesses said the Cracker Barrel employees were laid off Monday morning. That sucks. That really does. Just boom, you're done. You're out of here. We appreciate you serving Cracker Barrel and... You know, all of its customers over the years, but you're fired. That's terrible. But you know, how else do you do it? You got to rip that band-aid off, right? Hey, Cracker, Cracker Barrel here in Bend, Oregon, not uh, not open. Now, they mentioned Redmond. The, the, that couple was coming from Redmond. I used to take my crew of kids, sometimes as many as 12. We'd have one other car. I'd take my big white truck and we'd pack way too many kids in there. And somebody else would be driving another car with a handful of kids. And um, we would stop at the um, Black Bear Diner in Redmond, Oregon on our way. And Redmond is just to the west of Bend, Oregon. So I can see why the Bend, Oregon one didn't close or didn't do well because mm, – it, it, it's just probably not a good fit. Let's just say that. It might not be a good fit. And it just wasn't a good fit. And it took them four years to figure out. And all of a sudden, they're like, all right, we got to cut some. Here we go. One of the employees came in very upset because they had been laid off and told that the entire place was closing. They said they were given no notification whatsoever. They just arrived at work this morning and were told they no longer had a job. Um, yeah. Could that have been handled differently? Probably. Was it? No. And, you know, some stores give two weeks notice and hey, we're going to pay you guys benefits. We're going to pay your health insurance, whatever it is for a long time. That wasn't the case with Cracker Barrel and Bend, Oregon, right? Kefi Fast, fresh Mediterranean manager, 
Nick Stanitsis said, they definitely struggle with staffing. It's hard to justify going to a big chain when you can support a mom and pop restaurant. All right. So maybe you got a little of that too. Big corporate? No, we don't want to go to Cracker Barrel. No, we're local. And Bend is, Bend's kind of out there. It's kind of out there on its own. Right. I mean, it's one of those cities you got to, you got to, you don't just end up in Bend. You're like, ah, I'm just off the I 5 and we're here. No, it's way off of, you know, anywhere major. You got to make an effort to get there. So, from that standpoint, um, yeah, I could see that. But we're mainly focusing on Bend, Oregon here. And, you know, they closed another cup. They closed Beaverton and Tlaton. So, and those are in more urban type settings further west. So interesting that, that this happened. There's something else going on. Bottom line, Cracker Barrel, mm, not happening, right? Chisholm said, I actually wondered, especially after eating there, if Cracker Barrel was the right fit for the Bend demographic, because it really is a culture of foodies. And I didn't think the Cracker Barrel really fit in that mold. I think Cracker Barrel is comfort food for people who want something that they know they can count on. Let's go to Cracker Barrel. I know what I can get there. That's part of the reason I go to BJ's. I know what I can get there. I know they're going to have a decent um, draft beer on tap. I know they're going to have a killer uh, ribeye steak with mashed potatoes and uh, steamed broccoli. And then if you don't get the bazooki afterwards, what are you even doing, right? If you've never had a bazooki and you are remotely anywhere close, close to a BJ's, you need to, you need to, you need that experience. But in a sign of its struggles, a company representative said Monday there are 29 total employees impacted, including 15 full time employees. Cracker Barrel also confirmed to KPTV Monday the closure of their last two Portland area restaurants, Beaverton and, and Tolayton. So kind of an end of the era for Cracker Barrel. And we've got uh, the Medford store, which remains open. But I can't help but think the Medford store being a little further south, being a little bit maybe more, I hate to say it, conservative, somehow that weighed in there. And, um, you know, they're going to leave that store open. Maybe that store is on the, the cusp too. We don't really know. It's like, okay, that store isn't bleeding out money for one reason or another. The, the stores in Portland were bleeding out money because – <laughs> so many businesses and restaurants and stores have already shuttered in Portland because things are not going in the right direction there, right? Cracker Barrel representative confirmed that four closures were announced Monday, the fourth being in the St. Louis area. We still have more than 660 stores in 45 states, okay? 660 stores in 45 states. They got one in Oregon. Uno. Uno, I find that, uh, you know, I, I find that really interesting from a demographic standpoint and a business standpoint of, oh, okay, you can go to here, you know, how many, how many of these stores do they have in Georgia? Probably a bunch, right? Because it fits that demographic, the comfort food, that whole thing. Um, but, you know, things are weird here in the Pacific Northwest. Things are weird. I mean, people do weird stuff and we have big companies come here all the time and can't make it. And, you know, they close down and they just kind of put their tails between their legs and they go the F home. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. Uh, it, stores, businesses. I mean, look at all the crazy tech companies we have here in Seattle. I mean, that makes no sense at all. Let's, uh, you know what it was back in the day? It was okay. Seattle's the closest big city to the Pacific Rim. We're going to do a lot of business with Japan. And then I was like, okay, no, I think it's going to be more like China. And you know what? It doesn't really matter how geographically close you are. That's okay. We are a port city. But we just had so much technology get developed here. Hey, you got Microsoft. You got Amazon. You got Starbucks. Coffee. You know, coffee is just a crazy huge thing there, which I do not drink at all. Never had a single cup. Don't like it. Don't like the smell. You guys can have all the coffee you want. I'm more of a, yeah, not a coffee guy. How's that? So yeah, it was really interesting to see this go on from the standpoint of other stores in Oregon, just being, you know, they're pulling back. Nah, Jansen Beach, not so much. Not so much. Walmart basically pulling out. 
Let's talk about that for a second. You got Walmart. Um, you got zero stores in Portland, zero Walmart stores in Portland. Now you got zero Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel isn't the big story there. The Walmart is, right? The Walmart is. So you, this is this is that part of the business cycle where big chains they've got 660 stores, like we said. And they gotta, you know, they gotta call. The ones that aren't doing well and all but one in Oregon just got waxed. So not to say that, you know, this is a huge here, here or there type deal, but it's kind of fitting the pattern. And the pattern is more big stores are leaving than are going in. Cause when's the last time I recorded a story about saying, Hey, this big, this big company is going into Portland. I get, I think the, the closest thing I've had to that is that a, a big teacher's convention is going to happen in 2025 in downtown Portland in the convention center. That that should be entertaining because I do not think you're going to have much cleaned up um, in two years from now. I, you're going to have some cleanup, but with the way that um, way that Portland is going and you've got mayor Ted right now, he's looking at measure 110 which decriminalized a bunch of drugs and was supposed to put a bunch of money into treatment programs. I mean, come on, guys, you need to work this out. He's wildly upset that he doesn't have more money for treatment programs. So you're not going to have any of these homeless folks that are, you know, crazy addicted to drugs getting help anytime soon. In fact, Oregon as a whole is probably the worst state to be getting addiction treatment services for in the entire USA, Oregon. And we make great sneakers. We make great, great, you know, shoes for running Oregon, Bill Bowerman, right? Um, you had that whole thing going on, but addiction services, not so much. We just want people to come here and, you know, feel free to express themselves chemically. You know, it's better living through pharmacology, right? I mean, pfft. Yeah. Never mind that our pharmacology is coming from China. And then, did I say that right? China. China. And then uh, going to Mexico and then being brought up through the mostly closed southern border by our Mexican mafia. I mean, everybody just knows that's happening. And when you go to say, hey, yeah, the border's mostly closed. Yeah, it's mostly closed. It's just not, right? I mean, everybody just, it's so open now that this is a thing. So Oregon on the struggle bus retaining national chain, <laughs> specifically Portland. And that's, you know, that's kind of the bottom line here is let's be honest. This is still for the most part, a Multnomah County because even the other adjoining counties are arresting people and they're more serious about their quality of life. They're more serious about their, you know, public safety issues. Whereas Multnomah County is just kind of giving it up. And that's why you've got just such, you know, such a crazy shit show for, for lack of a better term. I'm going to record another podcast, but this past weekend in Portland, you had several hundred people get together in one of these street events. It's where they do donuts and stuff. They close down a street intersection. Portland doesn't have enough cops to deal with that. You just flat don't. I'm going to talk about that. I mean, it kind of goes, goes hand in hand with all these folks being addicted to drugs, living in homeless encampments, and then you don't have enough cops. You don't have enough cops to even, you know, put a kibosh on a massive street takeover that ambulances are having to detour around. All right, we can't go through it. We don't have enough cops. Because when you have that big of a get together of people who don't like police, you need to have a big police presence to make that happen, to shut that down. Otherwise, it's not going to go well for the cops. And so, you know, you've got situations like that going on. This is in North America in 2023. You don't have enough police officers to take care of a big get together and basically put that thing down and say, no, you guys can't just do donuts in the middle of an intersection in Portland you know, on a Saturday, you can't just do a t street takeover and have the cops come in and shut it down. Cops didn't come in and shut it down. It just, you know, they weren't able to address it. And eventually, it, I guess it just petered out. And, 
that's how these street takeovers are happening, but because you don't have enough cops. So Portland, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it has got, it's, it needs an enormous box of tissues for all of its issues. How's that? The rest of Oregon, eh, with the exception of some things that didn't work out with Cracker Barrel and a few other companies like that. Yeah. Outside of Multnomah County, outside of Portland, you got a different story. You got a different criteria. You got different clientele and things are happening differently. But Cracker Barrel, just a no-go on Oregon in general. They're going to leave one. They're going to leave one, but it's, you know, it's close enough down to uh, California. Yeah, let's throw that in with the Cali stores. Let's throw that in with the Cali stores. I don't know. It's wild though, right? All right. That's it for me. Thanks so much for being here. I will catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.